So what routine do you consider being the best routine to start working with for our teachers? That's a really tough question to answer. When, when teachers ask which routine is the first one to start with, we always struggle because the first routine depends on your goals as a teacher and, and your classroom goals. So we're big fans of starting the school year with Contemplate and Calculate because it establishes classroom culture. It establishes a classroom where thinking matters, where collaboration matters, where um, we can establish language for structural thinking that we can then use all year. In addition, Contemplate and Calculate leverages review material. So it's great to start the school year because you'll put a task at the center that may be a counting task and you're using it in high school, but you're using it for a really different purpose to articulate structural thinking. So um, we love that at the beginning of the year. And it gets teachers used to using the different aspects of the essential strategies and implementing them and building those muscles around it. Um, so we love that, but then again, it's not the only time people start using routines. Right. So, so sometimes yeah, they so start with a different one. If you've picked up the book or you're at a professional development um, day and you're about to start a unit and that unit is all, if you're a sixth or seventh grade teacher and you're talking about ratios and rates and it's all about quantities and how they're related to each other, then capturing quantities might be your best friend and a good place to start. Or if you're starting a unit that has makes liberal use of certain representations to understand a particular mathematical idea of the unit. You might want to use connecting representations to introduce and work with that representation. Or it's two-thirds of the way through the school year and you're staring standardized tests down and you want to use Design and Defend to build your students' capacity to make sense of problems, persevere in solving them, to communicate their own thinking, to, to uh, make sense of someone else's thinking and to really um, be able to articulate and justify their reasoning then decide and defend is one you'd want to grab and start not to say you couldn't start with decide and defend in September but you could but it, it seems like that's a good time of year if you're just starting one um, each routine offers different benefits for a teacher starting out contemplate then calculate is really kind of tight the timing is uh, really critical and the moving parts are more predictable. Um, but you don't have a lot of time to make decisions in the moment. With that said, we have um, a prescribed starting point, we have the first five tasks that we recommend and that's actually available on our website, fosteringmathpractices.com. In contrast, Design and Defend uh, is wide open and you, it actually is kind of a, um, what do you call that, black box? I was going to say a hot mess. <laughs> is a Pandora's box. Pandora's box, that's it. <laughs> One of those three things. When you launch it, you wind up seeing into the minds of students in ways you don't expect and we find time and time again teachers are uh, really surprised by how kids engage, what they know, how they talk about ideas and how they struggle with ideas that teachers know students can do the problem, but in order to construct a viable argument, in order to critique the reasoning of someone else, it takes so much more than just being able to do that problem. Mm -hmm. And so you unveil this hot mass of student thinking and you have some time in that routine to make decisions purposefully and really do a lot of slower intake where contemplate and calculate it's really quick intake. So those contrasts, so as far as which one's easier to pick up first, there's not really an answer. It's really about your goals, your classroom goals, and sometimes a time of year, and definitely content goals.